A, I want to cover off an area that I'm really excited to be working on, which is the BRICS class system. Now, I haven't covered it before in previous videos, mainly because I wanted you to understand the basics. Because if I start to go into that, you might start to think more about that rather than how to get used to using BRICS, especially if you're coming from another page builder. Anyway, the BRICS class system allows you to apply CSS styling to sections, containers, blocks, widgets, anything you want, so that every time you repeat or use them throughout your website, you can just apply like a CSS class. So if you've gone and said this section has padding of 10 pixels all the way around, you can apply that to every other section, but not just that. If you think outside the box, if you create a class system for padding 10, you could apply it to a section, a container, a block, anything you want. So let's start simple and then we'll build up on that. We are going to add in a basic section container. Okay, the section and the container are both full width. For now, I'm going to give the section and the container a color. So we're going to go to section, we'll go to the container and do the same there as well. Okay, so you can quite clearly see that the container, because it's full width and it's going all the way across, it completely fills up the section. Of course, when you view it on preview, you can see it's not fully stretched across. So let's just go and address that. Let's go to the container, go to content, and we are gonna say stretch all the way. This is for the container. And now when we go in, it's fully across. Okay, so, so far so good. But what if I want that section to have 20 pixels going all the way around? The simplest way to do it is just to go to style, go to your layout and do it. But what if every other section I now build, I kind of want to apply that, but I don't want to do a duplicate because right now you're probably going, well, that's pretty simple. You would apply it and then just duplicate the section, which is what I would have been doing with other page builders. But what we're going to do is create a class for that. And we can apply that wherever we want. Now, I am going to show you two ways. They're, they are both exactly the same, but I want you to understand my principles and the way I like to work. We're going to go to the section very first off, and we are going to go over here to where we have the little bar, and I am going to type in a name. I've called it section pad 20 pixel. Now, because it's all the way around, I don't need to put the word all. If this was only applied to the top, I would probably put pad top or top pad bottom pad, however you want to do it. But that's all we're going to do. And now I'm going to hit the crate or the save icon there. That is now created. And there are two things you need to appreciate. Number one, it is now applied to the section because it is visible here, but it's also in yellow as well. Now, if you don't want this applied to the section, you could just hit the X and it's gone. That is no longer applied. To be honest, we hadn't even put anything in yet. All we've done is give it a name. But for that section, if we want to put it back in again, you just click over here. If I start typing in pad, you can see it then. I could now apply it. Or you could go in and search for it or scroll down. So number one, it is applied because it is here and we have the X to get rid of it if we so want. But it is also in yellow. The yellow means that I can now set it and define it. So anything I do now will we'll basically apply it wherever you use it. So I'm going to go over down to my padding, link it, and I'm going to type in 20. And I don't need to do anything else. I don't need to hit save. I don't need to do anything else. It is automatically applied. Now I'm going to go over here and I'm going to add in a new section. So we now have a section and another container. They're completely blank. There's no stretch. There's no nothing going on. What we will do though is give this container a bit of color. So when I go to section, I now want to put 20 pixel padding in again. I could go in and just do it here, or I could go over here, and I could now pick section pad 20. Look at that. It's applied it. So rather than kind of duplicating your section because it's got your margins, your padding, and everything else, and you could apply this CSS class system, and believe me, this makes things so much more methodical and efficient. So you can clearly see for this section, it's applied and it is in yellow. But what if I want to refine this? So I've gone and added it, but now I go, mm, it needs to actually be tw like, I don't know, 50 on the right hand side. Now, if you go over here and you type in 50 here, it will apply it across the board. In fact, let me, let me make it really ridiculous, 500. The reason why it's applying it to both is because this is in yellow. So let's just put this back over to 20. Now, if you want to touch the second section or any other section, but you don't want to touch like almost like the constants, the, the controlling class system, you know, the, the, the parent of them all, 
what you want to do is hit the X over here. Clear that. Now, when I go over to this section and I go here and I type in 500, it will only apply it to the second one or this one. And it is still maintained the 2020 because that's where we started off with. Why has it not applied it to the top one? Well, basically because the yellow is not there, but the class name still is. So please look, section one, look, I'm even going to get rid of it there. The class is applied. Over here, the class is applied. It's only when it's in yellow. Now, what if into the container, I add in another container? Sorry, I meant to say block. So now into our container where this one was white, don't forget, and this one was red, pinkish red, we've now added in two blocks. Now I could again do the same thing where I go to my container, I could go to the layout, put 20 pixel padding again there, and sure I have a class name and I might call it container pad 20 pixel, 15 pixel, however you wanna do it. But what if I wanna consistently always be applying this like 20 pixel padding for whatever reason, okay? Maybe I don't want to be using uh, this class that I have here at the moment. So I'll tell you what, let's just get rid of it. And we'll go to this section and we will kill it off there as well. So now on none of the items, there is no padding. I'm going to go to the section. I can pick any one of these to be absolutely honest. Okay, I'm going to go to this section and I'm now going to create a new class system and I'm going to call it pad 20 pixel like that. Okay, and I'm going to hit the save button there. And now I'm going to go to my padding and we'll put in a 20. I'm going to go to my container now and I'm just going to go and pick pad 20 like that. Look, I'm just going to pick it now. This is now going to apply pad 20 to everything. Now at the moment with the block, you probably can't see it because there is no content, but let me, let me prove it is existing there. Look, I'm going to apply it again. That is now going to apply pad 20 across the board. So there's 20, 20, 20 all the way going around. So let me just add something into here now. I've just dropped in a block within a block and can you see it? There is now 20 pixel padding there. So you could apply it just to your section or just to your container with your naming convention, or you could just create one and it applies everywhere. Now, why am I getting excited about this? How many times have you created something where you give all of your items a left margin of 30 maybe? You could create a class system and just apply it really quick. Why is that good? Well, let me again make the point. Let me just go over here. Let, well, I'll pick any one of these. I'll just click it. By the way, if you're, um, if, if when you go to any of your items, it's not in yellow, just click it, okay? And you can have more than one class system. I could go in here and go, right, okay, we'll have this one as well on this one and this one and this one. You can apply as many as you want. Just make sure you're not conflicting or creating like some sort of paradox with what you're applying. Anyway, back to this padding 20, right? We are now on here. Now let's go to the style. At the moment, everything is on a 20. Let's make it be 50. Everything has changed, right? And I hope this is now kind of sinking in with what we're doing. So if you imagine on your website, your page or whatever, you've gone and added in say a particular style and now you need to change it, rather than you kind of going copy, paste, copy, paste, copy, paste and all of that, you could just now do this. Now for simplicity, I've just gone back to a section in a container. I am going to add in a button. And before I do any of the styling with the typography, the sizing, the positioning or anything like that, I'm gonna go and give it a class name. I'm gonna call it button style. Now, if you have different buttons, you might say button style call to action, button style contact, button style for shop products or whatever you want. So please do think about your naming. So there we go, we've created it. Now, whatever style I apply here is going to be applied to every other button when I eventually apply that style. So I've changed the padding. I'm going to change the typography, make it uppercase. We'll make it weightier. We'll add a bit of border radius as well. And we'll give it a background color. Now, if I add in another button, we get the default styling. Well, I'm going to click on that button go over here and apply button style. I mean, there is no positioning done on it, so we don't have any margin and it's all nicely cramped up together. But very, very quickly, we've just applied a style. So if you've got your styles all set up for your different buttons, you can now do that. But you, but this is where you go beyond just doing your borders, your, your padding, your buttons and stuff like that. 
Start thinking about your headings, your subheaders, and your text. Let me explain. Let's drop in a heading. Imagine this now is going to be your main heading or what you might call your hero heading. Um, Because you're bound to have a hero heading and it might only appear on one or two pages maybe. And then you'll have main heading, subheading, then you might have like um, icon headings maybe, then you might have body text. Now, of course, you're probably going to sit there and go, well, yeah, you could start doing all of this within your theme styles, right? You could go over here, go to theme styles, do your typography. That is all good and well. However, if you start to use the class system, you're going to have a lot more control and you might go, no, we're going to turn this into um, a particular heading or something like that. This is a really cool way of doing it. Let me show you. We're going to go to heading. I'm going to call this one a hero heading, maybe, or hero text. Let's just save that. And I've applied a bit of weighting and letter spacing as well. So what we have now is our heading. OK, and we just click back on there. This has all been applied, all of his style and setting. So if I now go in and add another heading, and I'm pretty sure you're getting the idea now with what we're doing here. If I click on this heading, if I go over here and I pick hero heading, and this heading that I currently have, I could quite easily clear that, not apply it and go, you know what, we're going to create a new one. We're going to call this one main heading. Save it, do your styling, etc., and away you go. If you start to think, from the get-go, before you build out the website. And I know in our previous tutorials, we started working on the header. But with the header, you can almost excuse not doing this right away. Because I'm just putting in like a section, a logo, and a nav menu. You know, get over it. But here, before you now start doing your hero banner and every other section and like that, if you now start to create your class system over here, for what's going to be your headings, your body text and all of that, um, your buttons, um, maybe you got divider lines, what particular style will they have? I mean, what if I go to my container and I am just going to, I'm going to get rid of that because it had the pad 20 pixel because we want to create a new class system. So we're still leaving the pad. That is still applied. Look, it is still there. It's not disappeared anywhere. I'm now going to call it container BG image. We'll just save that. We go to style, we go to the background, go with this one here. Let's just enter that in. We will make it be a cover. Before I continue, I am just going to clear this out. And on this particular container, I'm just going to very quickly add in some height. And then underneath now, I'm just going to add in some further sections. Now, if I go over to say one of these containers here, so I'm scrolling, no, actually we'll go to this one here. So it's kind of like the fourth one down now. Okay, I'm going to go over to it and I'm going to pick the container background image. It's brought over the image. Right now, what it hasn't done is the height, because if you must remember I took away the yellow or I said, no, don't apply it to everything. So please try and keep consistent with are you applying it to everything or just one? But the beauty about this is that is, look, I look, I mean, look, it's quite nice, isn't it? Because it looks like it's overlapping, which it is overlapping in a way. But if you go and add any style, it will now replicate. And if I go back over to this container here. We make sure it's applied OK. Uh, we go over to the layout and we go to the height now and I go with a 500 pixel. OK, you can now instantly see that down here for this section, it's also gone and applied it. All right. And if I was to go to uh, this third container here, OK, I tell you what, let's go and apply it again. OK. I could also click over here and go, well, let's do the padding that's 20 pixel as well. So I am applying multiple classes. Now I could sit here and go on and on and on about all these different options. Uh, but in future videos that we're doing, I will be referring back to the class. So it's not going to be a complete alien shock to you. We are going to be doing it slowly throughout. So if you're looking at this and going, I still don't get it. When we start to work on a real hero banner and other sections and team sections and stuff like that, it will all start to fit into place with why we're doing it, okay? But for anyone out there that was wondering, why are we not covering it? Because I want you to understand the basics before we start to get into what you can do here. And believe me, this will make your life so much more efficient and fun and happy. Because I'm Imran Web Squadron. I hope you like, subscribe, share and follow. I'll see you. Never
never break, always fight, never quit, do it right, play the game, win it life, have no shame, there's no time, feel the pain, let the grind, I could change, in my mind, pick a lane, commit and climb, the only way, to win it life, I never miss that fact, taking big swings, bitch, hand me the back.